it's extremely common in the design industry to offer your product in multiple different colorways or CMF variants. My goal for this video is to outline what tools you have available to you in Keyshot that allow you to configure colorways. I'm gonna break down the pros and cons of each method, highlight some limits, and at the end of the video, discuss what I would really love to see in Keyshot over the next couple of years. Before we continue with this video, I just wanted to remind you that if you ever need professional Keyshot resources, look no further than Vizune. We've built out the biggest Keyshot library available and it's specifically for designers. So whether you need decorations, materials, studio scenes, or even fully furnished interiors, we've got what you need to create the renders your designs deserve. Consider checking out our professional 3D resources today. Now, before we jump into this tutorial, I wanna get some terminology straight. In the industry, the technical term is CMF variant, color, material, finish, variant. Now, if someone said colorway to me, I'd know exactly what they mean, and you can definitely use that professionally, but because Keyshot have a tool called colorways, which is slightly different to CMF variant, I'm gonna try and use CMF variant more in this video so you understand what I mean. Within Keyshot, there are two ways of creating material variants. There's multi-colors and multi-materials. Now, because multi-colors is a bit easier to understand, that's where I'm gonna start the tutorial. I'm looking at the body plastic for this PS5 controller, and you can see I've got the diffuse as this very desaturated blue. If I click on that color, inside here, I can enable it as a multi-color. Think of this blue one material as the parent and then anything below it is gonna be the child. So these are the actual multicolors. This is just the name of the overall color. So I'm gonna name this one blue and then add in another color and I'm gonna call it red so we've got quite a difference. For the red variant, I can just change the hue and change the color in here. Just so we have more to play with, I'm also going to go through and add multicolors for the other main elements of the controller too. Okay, so we have a few different multicolors in this scene. Now we can look at configuring them. The tool we're going to use to configure multicolors is called Colorways, as I mentioned in the introduction. To access the Colorways panel, just come up to the top toolbar where it says View and then Colorway. Inside this panel, it's going to show you all your available multicolors. All you need to do is click through them. So I'll go red, red, and red and then add it as a colorway with the plus symbol. I can then rename this colorway red. To add a new colorway, I'll add blue, 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 and then again back to the plus symbol for my blue colorway. Now they're configured, you can toggle between them by clicking on the colored bar. Unfortunately, this doesn't work when clicking the overall colorway, but I hope that's going to be something that gets patched in a future version. The last multicolor I want to create with this is for the label, the graphics that surround and go on top of each button. That label is on the main body plastic. To get to that, I go labels, label properties, and then again, I have a diffuse that I can link up with multicolor. Now I have my blue four and red four multicolors under multicolor three. I can now assign these to the colorway. Unfortunately, and kind of counterintuitively, I can't actually select these in here, i.e. click on blue and go to blue. It doesn't actually have an impact. You can see that doesn't change. To apply these multicolors, you just need to drag blue to blue and then red for to red. The issue is though, with the colorways and multicolor option is when materials start to become more advanced. All of the materials we've used in this case is just changing the diffuse, which is the most basic change you're gonna make. But we all know as you add CMF variants, there are gonna be other properties that change. You might have white gloss and matte black. You might need to change the actual bump texture. You might need to change things like the refractive index. You might need to change the material type full stop. And this is limited. Now there are ways of using this method to change other properties. Say for example, I wanted this blue to be matte and the red to be gloss. How would we do that? So the setting we're looking at controlling there is roughness. Now, roughness isn't a color, it's a value. However, we can control it with a color by right-clicking this box, going to textures, and then changing it to a vertex color, basically just controlling it with a color. So I could do vertex color, and then the default color I could configure as a multicolor. Add multicolor. I could have black, which could be gloss. Black is zero, so zero roughness is gloss. And I could have probably like a 50% um, gray, so somewhere in there. But do you really wanna go through your whole material setup 
using vertex color for everything instead of values. And then what happens when you need a completely different material type to achieve your CMF variant? For example, if one variant is in anodized metal and the other one is plastic. So in my opinion, as of September 25, Colorways is both limited and a little bit flawed. It's good in certain applications and it can be really efficient. But the second option, which is what I'm going to show you now, is what I would prefer to use professionally. Multimaterials is also accessed within the material panel right at the top of the big button that says multimaterial. Now it's going to name your first multimaterial the same as the parent. I'm going to leave the parent as body main and call the first multimaterial blue, just as we did with multicolors. Now I have three options for creating new multimaterials. The first option we have is creating a new plastic, which is just going to create a new default plastic material with no links to our existing multi-material. The second option is going to duplicate our existing multi-material, but also not link anything. So it's going to duplicate the label as well, but have it in a different line in the material graph. The third option is going to duplicate our existing multi-material, but with links to textures. So for example, if I had a noise texture on this plastic and I selected the third option, it is going to use the same noise texture for both multi-materials. Likewise, it will link the textures and colors that I have for the label. Now, I don't want this tutorial to become a material graph tutorial, so I'm going to go with the easiest one to understand, which is duplicate. I now have another version of this material that I can name red. I can dial in the red color. And there we go. And the benefit of using this method is that we can change all of these settings just on this multi-material and they're not going to change what's happening on the blue. So going back to the example that we had earlier, we can have the blue in 0.2 roughness and the red in gloss. But going even further, I can also change the material type. So instead of having the casing as plastic, I could go with metallic paint. I've just gone through and configured my other multi-materials to make the red CMF variant. It's also good to highlight here that multi-materials point themselves out within the material panel so they're always easy to find. So how do we configure these into CMF variants? The tool we're going to use to bring them together is Studios. Now Studios is available in the window dropdown, Studios, or U on the keyboard is the shortcut. Studios is my favorite and probably the defining tool in Keyshot. It's really important that you understand how to use Studios professionally because it's going to massively increase your workflow, efficiency, and make it easier for you to export renders at the end. But in this case, we're just going to use Studios to capture our CMF variants. So we're going to add a new studio, and this studio is going to be called Red. And then down below, I can deselect Camera, Environment, and make sure the only thing selected for the studio is Multi-Materials. Now to use this, you have a drop down which contains all your different multi-materials of which I have five in the scene. I shouldn't need to go through and configure them, but you can go through and check that each one is correct by just toggling which one is active for that studio. When you're happy, you can go and duplicate the studio. This one is going to be called blue. And then go through multi-material by multi-material and make sure the blue one is active. And just to update that thumbnail, I can also click render thumbnail at the bottom and that will go to the blue variant. Let's put it to the test, blue and red. I will also point out that as of 2025, Colorways is also an option within the Studios panel. So there's not really a benefit to using either multi-materials or the Colorway option if you are going to be using Studios in your workflow. So that's a brief look at the two methods you've got for configuring CMF variants in Keyshop but I just want to take a moment to outline where I'd like to see this go in the future. Colorways is the right direction. It was a good idea. We need a tool in Keyshot that is going to allow us to configure CMF variants easily. But because it's limited to multi-colors, there's going to be a lot of products and projects where it's not going to be suitable. So what I would love to see is Colorways being treated more as a CMF variant tool. The easiest way to do that is to let it accept both multi-colors and multi-materials. What we need is a panel that lets us configure whatever CMF variants we can dream up. Once that's done, we can then start dreaming of how we're going to use this. For example, using that more in automation. Imagine if you have all of your finished shots in studios. 
your elevations on a gray background for e-commerce, your abstract shots for marketing, maybe your in situs as well. How good would it be if you could say to Keyshot, I want to export all of these images in all of the different colorways and just let it automate that export. Keyshot can already automatically export your studios. It's not that much of a leap to do it for all the different CMF variants too. But I actually think that this whole CMF material workflow in Keyshot goes one step further. I think there's an even better solution that Keyshot should be looking at. See, if you think about it, every multi-color is actually a multi-material. You're just not changing all of the other properties. So really, and it's kind of what we've covered today, multi-materials are the best thing to use. So how could we expand on multi-materials to make them even more powerful and efficient? Currently, if you want to link properties between multi-materials, you have to use the material graph. So if I wanted to make the roughness the same between these two material variants, I would have to add in a node, say color to number, type in a value, 0.2, and then input into that into anything where I want the roughness to be controlled. And it will always be the same because it's being controlled by the same node. Imagine how efficient it would be if I could just right click roughness and then choose to link that to a value on the red, say the metal roughness. It could even have a little linked icon next to it to show that that property is linked. And if you change it in one place, it's gonna change it on all the other places that are linked. Now I know we're getting the weeds here and it's difficult for me to communicate without diving into Photoshop or Figma and actually mocking it up. But what I'm trying to say is I think there's actually a much better solution in there. If we start a discussion now and ask for it, maybe in a future release, Keyshot will address this and make a really robust tool for handling CMF variants. Hopefully this video has been really helpful. And if you have any thoughts on how materials and multi-materials should be managed in Keyshot, then let me know down in the comment section down below.